Hello everyone and welcome to another game from a most eventful round 9 of the FIDE Candidates Tournament 2022. It's Temur Rajavo vs Hikaru Nakamura. Uh, Rajavo still without a single win uh, faces Hikaru. Uh, these were the standings before uh, the actual round 9. So these are the standings after round 8. If any of you um, uh, forgot this, so you can see that uh, Rajavo uh, has 3 points. But that's um, uh, 6 draws and 2 losses. And Hikaru doing uh, much much better. 2 wins, 5 uh, draws and only 1 one loss uh, so it would be uh, for Hikaru if he wins this he could uh, get, get closer to the uh, to the leaders uh, Yanni Pomnichi and Fabiana Corwana but uh, Rajabov still uh, well of course wants to wants to do as well as he can in the tournament and he will try his best to win this uh, in their uh, first encounter in the first half of the candidates tournament if you remember Hikaru had the, the white pieces Rajabov played the Berlin defense and Hikaru won that game very nicely uh, because uh, well uh, who, whoever lost again uh, <laughs> against uh, uh, play, playing the Berlin defense, as I always say. Uh, so here uh, Rajabov chose e4, and after e5, knight to f3, knight to c6, and bishop b5. The Rui Lopez is on the board. Hikaru also went for knight to f6, the Berlin defense, and as I always say, whoever lost a game playing the Berlin defense. So d3, we have bishop to c5, and now c3. Uh, Rajabov goes for the absolute main line. Hikaru uh, mixed it up a little bit with knight b to d2 in their first game in the first half of the candidates. Here c3, we have castles, castles, and now uh, standard uh, idea here is just d6. So continue development, strengthen the center, prepare to develop your uh, light square bishop. Uh, but Hikaru plays d5 here. It's a, it's a fairly rare move here, but it has been played by pretty much everyone. Uh, for example, Magnus Carlsen played it against Levon Aronian, uh, Caruana played it against Wesley So, Carlsen also played it against Karyakin, uh, Aronian played it against MBL, uh, but there is also one very special game uh, that Nakamura uh, played against Vasily Vanchuk, uh, Nakamura defeated him uh, in the 2011 uh, Amber Blindfold Tournament. All of those games uh, featured this D5 idea, so uh, Rajabov uh, most likely uh, pre prepared for this. Knight B to D2, D captures on E4, we D captures an e4 and now pawn to a5, not allowing b4 as that is all, well more, more often than not uh, a great move by white, if not just outright winning. Queen to c2 and now queen to e7. We have a4 now uh, and here comes knight to a7. In a lot of the games that we mentioned, knight to b8 was played uh, and for example, Magnus Carlsen versus Vladimir Kramnik uh, in the Leuven Blitz 2017 that ended, uh, that ended in a draw uh, featured this knight to b8 move. Uh, but here we have knight to a7 by Hikaru and it is still not a new game uh, but uh, we are getting very very close to that. So putting pressure on the bishop, uh, bishop back to e2 and now just repeating knight to c6 asking Rajabov do you have anything better. Knight to b3 attacking the bishop and the bishop to a7. Now, interestingly, bishop to b6 is the absolute best move here, or, or you could consider d6 or b6, but definitely not bishop to a6, maybe that Hikaru played. Uh, and this was played this year, uh, a month ago in the in the Bundesliga, the game ended in a draw between Jens Uwe Meidwald and uh, Stefan Zilka. Uh, but uh, after bishop to a6, there is a problem, and Rajabov immediately points to the problem by playing bishop to b5. So it's like they're repeating moves, but not really, because now with Hikaru's bishop on a7, Bishop to b5 comes with tempo. We we're just threatening to uh, capture the knight, and after pawn captures, we're gonna win the a5 pawn. The bishop on a7 is blocking the rook's defense of the pawn on a5. So here, Hikaru should just uh, admit that the bishop does not belong on a7 and waste another move with bishop to b6. Then the game continues and everyone is happy. But like a true Saiyan, of course, Hikaru uh, has his pride and he goes for bishop to g4. And this is usually the start of everyone downfall. So now bishop captures on c6, bishop captures on f3, Rajabov plays g captures on f3, b captures on c6, and now he grabs a pawn. Knight captures on a5, and it's not just that you grab the pawn, but uh, also white just has a passed a pawn, and that's, um, uh, that's a pretty big deal. 
So queen to e6, uh, and now queen to e2. Now you have to set up a, a bit of a d defense perimeter here. Knight to h5 to f4 could be a bit, a bit of a problem. The bishop also is looking very nice here. Uh, so knight to h5. You could also just win the pawn right back with bishop captures and rook captures and a5, but this is a monster bishop. You don't want to trade it for, for you know, just winning back your pawn. So knight to h5, and now pawn to b4. Now Rajabov starts marching those pawns forward. King to h8, as you know, Rajabo is playing king to h1 and the rooks are coming to the g file. Uh, and now king to h1. We have h6 by Hikaru. Now comes rook to g1 and pawn to f5. Uh, going for a breakthrough here on the king side. And now Rajabo has to... Uh, figure out how to go about this. Does he somehow play a rook g2? Maybe develops the bishop, gets the other rook into the game if he wants to play for some sort of an attack. Or does he play rook to g2 uh, with some other idea? But also very interesting was e captures and e5. Uh, on f5, I'm just going to mention this because after rook captures bishop e3, uh, what can what can black play here? For example, if knight to f4, we play queen c4, offer a queen trade. We're attacking the c6 pawn. We're putting pressure on the knight. So everything is looking great for white um uh, it will be very hard for, for Hikaru to defend this. Uh, but okay, Rajabu has a different idea. He plays rook to g2, f captures on e4, and now queen captures on e4. And this is a very important capture. For example, if you undouble your pawns, then queen h3 is uh, a problem for uh, for white. Um, uh, the, uh, now rook to f3 is coming. You're going to double rook on the f file. And, you know, with all of the uh, this pressure, it's not going to be uh, all that possible for white to survive this attack. So here, queen captures on e4. This is a must for, for Rajabov. And now comes rook to f6. Uh, this is, uh, uh, if you go for queen to h3 now, which of course is possible, then queen g4. And now you kind of have to trade queens. You can do it with queen captures on f3, captures, captures, and now we play knight captures on c6. And while this is playable, it seems like it's uh, too much to give white. Rook captures on c3, knight captures on a7, rook captures, now pawn to a5. You start pushing those pawns forward. The bishop is coming to e3. You will have more support for the pushing, and it's very unlikely black can stop this. So Hikaru tries rook to f6 instead of this, uh, adds more support to the, to the c6 pawn, and now maybe you can double up on the f file uh, but now bishop to e3 bishop captures on e3 f captures and queen to d5 now offering a queen trade and here um, uh, we even have a photo of this moment so if you guys want to enjoy it a little bit there we have it uh, hikaru played queen to d5 and he went into his staring mode uh, and rajabov is weighing the situation uh, so you can see that it's an incredibly intense moment. Hikaru knows uh, uh, Rajabov is better due to the past a pawn, but he will of course uh, uh, try try to ho hold on. Uh, if he could avoid trading queens and keep this position, then it'd be maybe uh, good for Hikaru because he did open up Rajabov's king, uh, but it is simply not possible. Queen to g4 by Rajabov. He wants to trade queens, but on his terms. Now the knight is hanging here. So just queen captures on f3, pretty much the only move if you don't want to play queen to f7. Uh, queen captures on f3, rook captures attacking the pawn here, and just rook to e2 defending. And now if you look at the position, the material is equal, but it's the past a pawn that will pose problems for Hikaru. So Hikaru plays c5, uh, he wants to get rid of his double c pawn, and knight to c6 now. And here uh, Hikaru again rushed it a little bit, he played c captures on b4, and pretty much... Uh, uh, simplify the, uh, the the position too much for for Rajab. With with knight to f6, you are still in the game because it's very hard to advance those pawns. For example, if b5, knight comes to d5. Now you're attacking this pawn. You're attacking this pawn, and the black is um, uh, fighting uh, once again. But here, after c captures and b4, now Rajabov can just push those pawns. So c captures. We have rook to f6 by Hikaru attacking the knight, and now b5. The knight nicely defended here on the outpost. Rook to d6. Uh, and now we have pawn to a5. So just continuing to push the pawn, not uh, trying to waste time grabbing material. Knight to f6 and now pawn to a6. We have knight to d7. Uh, and pawn to a7. So beautifully played, the pawn nicely defended here by both the knight and the rook. King to g8, and now rook to c2. We have king to f7, now comes knight to b4, putting pressure on the c7 pawn. So c5, Hikaru has to give it up somehow, he decides to give it up this way. B captures on c6, now getting another pass pawn. Knight to b6, and pawn to e4 now. We have knight to c8, trying to grab the a7 pawn, but just rook c to a2. Everything is nicely defended. King 
king to e6, we have rook to a6, and now rook to d4. We have knight to d5, uh, now going for knight to c7 check, which would win the rook. So king to d6, but now knight to b6, and he was in this position on move uh, 41 after both players have reached time control uh, that Hikaru Nakamura resigned the game as there is nothing more to be done here. Uh, so the rook is attacked and once you capture the knight as you can't save the rook uh, we're just gonna capture here and it doesn't matter what you play if king c7 we just force the king to capture the pawn king captures we offer a rook trade and that's it you either trade and we bring a queen into the game or you have to give up the rook here for the pawn now we're up a full rook of course completely winning so incredible incredible game that really shows uh, the the character of, of chess players not just elite chess players but of every chess player because here uh, in this moment where Hikaru could have um, played it back after knight to b3 and bishop to a7. This bishop to b5 move is, is incredibly annoying because you realize that the bishop does not belong here, but there is no chess player in the world that would admit this and you know waste another move with bishop to b6. Uh, that's just not how a chess player's uh, mind works. Like, uh, even, even if I had this position, I would never uh waste the move uh you know uh i i would also place something at least you know just just try and you know uh li live in the illusion that uh, i don't have to waste the move that you know the, what i played is actually very much playable uh but uh, it, it's just um, you know uh, the, the reality is just very different uh so yeah uh, that's the game hope you guys enjoyed it never uh you know be afraid to to waste a move if it improves your position uh you know you're gonna lose uh, uh not so many games so you know maybe maybe an, uh, this advice can help you in your future games uh, i would like to thank stephen mcneil bidao uh, is the one daniel schmidt ultimate poker coaching and mohammed al saban for your contribution to my channel thank you a lot i really appreciate it as usual you can check two of my previous videos here thank you for watching and i will see you soon continuing the coverage of the candidates uh, until it finishes so thank you all i will see you soon and have an excellent rest of your day and we are going to show the standings after round nine but uh, after we check out a few more games uh, see you soon